Magandang araw mga bata! Ngayon pa lang ay binabati ko na ang lahat ng Merry Christmas! Ako si Enrico Ebelte. I'm Trexy G. Kiyas. I am Camila Kim Dait. May Antoinette Dizon. May Ann L. Vigorio. I'm Marian May Mago. And I am Hart Romero. We are the... Group 2! Now take a look at this picture. So yan, di ba nakikita nyo? Merong ama na kasama yung anak niya na gumagawa ng Christmas tree. So, pag nakikita nyo ba tong larawan na ito, ano yung unang pumapasok sa isip nyo? Sige. Making. Decorating. Assembling. Creating. Building. Designing. Tama ang sinabi nyong lahat. Mahusay mga bata. Yung mga sinabi nyo ay related sa topic natin ngayon. Today, we will talk about crafting the curriculum. A curriculum as a planned sequence of learning experiences should be at the heart of every teacher. So for us future teachers, dapat yung pag-build ng curriculum ay nasa puso natin. Kasi sa atin nagsisimula yung curriculum eh, yung mga itutulong na, ituturo natin sa bata, sa atin nagagaling kung ano dapat yung dapat nilang matutunan. According na rin yun sa pag-aassess natin. Sabi rin dito, Every teacher as a curricularist should be involved in designing a curriculum. So, katulad nila na sinabi ko kanina, tayo mga future teachers, ay yung current teachers ngayon, ay involved sa pagbuo ng ating curriculum. Kasi, di ba, tayo yung nakakaalam kung ano yung dapat na matutunan ng bata. Siyempre, na-experience din natin yan. You will be providing them the necessary experience that will enable the learner what you intend them to learn. So tayo, di ba yung magpo-provide ng mga, ano, mga learnings na dapat nilang matutunan. Kaya napakahalaga nito yung pagbuo ng curriculum. Kasi dito natin mapaprocess yung learning ng ating mga estudyante or pupils. So yung topic po namin ay binubuo ng three lessons. Ayan, yung lesson one, Fundamentals of Curriculum Designing. Lesson 2, Approaches to Curriculum Designing. And Lesson 3, Curriculum Mapping. So, tatalakay natin yan mamaya. So, pumunta na tayo dito sa Lesson 1, yung Fundamentals of Curriculum Designing. So, di ba yung Fundamentals, ito yung tinatawag natin na mga primary, primary steps sa pagbuo ng curriculum. So, i-discuss natin yan ngayon. Ayan. Meron tayo dito Peter Olivas 10 Ashoms for Curriculum Designers. So ano ba yung Ashoms? Di ba ito yung mga statements na provenly true? Ito yung according kay Peter Olivas. Okay, Trexy? Thank you very much Enrico Ebalte for your wonderful explanation. So yung Ashoms po, ito po yung mga statement na i-establish or na-implement ni Oliva na napatunayang true. So yung ano um yung ano yung una diyan is the curriculum change is inevitable, necessary and desirable. So anong meaning niyan? Whether we like it or not, we have to um change the curriculum. It is also important and it is likable. Earlier it was stated that one of the characteristics of curriculum it is being dynamic. It has to be active. It depends upon the needs and expectations of our society or community. The curriculum in the um, past may not be suited at at present because because there is or there are knowledge. There are different perspectives. And the nature of learners has evolved because because of the teachers should um, respond to the changes that um, occur in schools and its context. Societal development and knowledge revolution come so fast that the um, need to address the changing condition requires new requires new curriculum design. That is why whether we like it or not. We have to alter, we have to change, we have to modify because it is inevitable. 
it is also important and it is desirable or likable. And the second axiom according to Oliva is that curriculum reflects as a product of its time. And this is called also, um, and this is what we call timeliness. That is what characteristics of curriculum. Relevance, it should respond to changes brought about by current, by current social forces, philosophical position, psychological principles, new knowledge, and educational reforms. With the new normal academic setup, it is was not expected at all. This pandemic will happen, but because it happens, have to alter something from our curriculum especially for learning modalities that we have to use. The third axiom is that curriculum changes made earlier can exist concurrently with newer curriculum changes. What's that? A revision in a curriculum starts and ends slowly. More often, curriculum is gradu gradually paced in and paced out. Thus, the change that occurs can coexist and often and oftentimes overlaps for long periods of time. We have actually um, the different sets of or different curricula in the Philippines, but it actually overlaps. Um, what the technical working group is doing is their enhancement or modification from the previous curriculum. Four, and the curriculum change depends on people who will implement the change. So, teachers will implement the curriculum should be involved in its development. Hence, should know to design a curriculum. And teachers should be members of the technical working group of the committee who will be designing the curriculum. Because the teachers are um, the implementers of the curriculum and it is best that they should design and own the changes. This will assure an effective and long and long lasting change. One of the members of the technical working group should be teachers because because they are the primary implementers of the curriculum aside from the principal, aside from the school head, um, aside from the supervisor, aside from the curriculum experts and aside from the stakeholders like the students, the parents, the political sectors, the private, um, the private sectors, and the religious sectors. Fifth, the curriculum development is a cooperative group activity. It is not, it's not work of one person. It is not work of entity or soul in entity. It needs, it needs group decisions in some aspects of curriculum development are suggested consultations with um, stakeholders like the political like the religious like the um, the laymen or ordinary members of the community like the students and possible and possible will add to a sense of ownership even learners should participate in some aspect of curriculum designing any significant change in the curriculum should um, involve a broad, a broad range of stakeholders to gain their understanding, support, and input. If we will have to um, enhance the curriculum of hospitality management, for, um, for example, we need also to um, invite aside from parents, teachers, supervisor, curriculum experts, or our industry partners because they know the compet competencies needed by, he by these prospective workers in the hospitality industry. If we are to enhance the if we are to enhance the teacher education curriculum, we need also to invite personalities from the Department of Education because DepEd is the end users of the prospective professional teachers produced by the teacher education institutions. Okay, Camila. Thank you, Trixie. So, yung pang six is, curriculum development is a decision-making process made from choices of alter alternatives. Dito, 
Ah, dito sa kanila dapat manggaling kung ano yung nilalaman, kung ano yung ituturo, at kung paano nila i-assess yung isang estudyante. Ang curriculum developer is yung mga highly trained educational professionals who devote their career to creating the instructional materials that teachers use in the classroom to facilitate student learning. Kung baga sila yung gumagawa o yung paano yung gagawin nila sa curriculum. Next is yung curriculum development is an ongoing process. From the word ongoing, patuloy lang siya na proseso na kailangan lang improve. Ito ay never-ending process. It should be flexible to a certain extent so as to be open for accept accepting the latest changes. There should be a Continuous monitoring to assure that the program is on track and problem does not reoccur. Kailangan pa rin na mamonitor para malaman kung konektado or align pa ba yung nasa curriculum na tinuturo. Next is, curriculum development is more effective if it is a comprehensive process rather than a piecemeal. Curriculum design should be based on a careful plan. Comprehensive means covering completely or broadly. Yung piecemeal naman is yung paunti-unti or one piece at a time. Mas magandang ilagay sa curriculum development is yung comprehensive process kaysa sa piecemeal kasi mas, kasi mas mabilis maintindihan yung kapag kompleto yung hindi siya paunti-unti. Next is, it should, be, it should not be hit or miss proposition but should involve careful planning and be supported by adequate resources, needed time, and sufficient personnel. Next is number nine. Curriculum development is more effective when it follows a systematic process. It should be systematically organized kung ano ba yung ituturo, sino ang tuturuan, at kung paano ito ituro. Next is number ten. Curriculum development starts from where the curriculum is. Most curriculum planners begin with the existing curriculum. Kailangan lang itong i-improve para mas maintindihan or madagdag, madagdagan yung ibang information para mas maging effective yung laman ng sa curriculum. Okay, back to you, Enrico. Thank you, Trexie and Camila. So, ayun. Building upon the ideas of Oliva, let us continue learning how to design a curriculum by identifying its components. For most curricula, the major components or elements are answers to the following questions. So kung may kita nyo dito, ito yung apat na questions kung paano tayo makakabuo ng isang curriculum. Nakalagay dito. What learning outcomes need to be achieved? So, ano ba yung kailangan nating ano, yung maabot para ma-reach natin yung learning ng bata or yung tinatawag nating intended learning objectives? What content should be included to achieve the learning outcomes? So, ano ba yung mga dapat nating ilagay na content sa ating curriculum para ma-reach natin yung ano, learning outcomes o yung tinatawag nating subject matter? What learning experiences and resources should be employed. So, ano ba sa mga karanasan natin bilang isang curricularist, yung pwede nating ano, makabuo tayo ng idea para malaman natin kung ano ba talaga yung kailangan ng mga bata. Kung may kulang ba sa curriculum, kung may kailangan bang idagdag, o yung tinatawag natin teaching learning methods. How will the achieved learning outcomes be measured? So, paano daw natin masusukat kung effective nga ba yung ginagawa nating curriculum sa para sa learning ng mga bata o yung tinatawag nating assessment or achieved learning outcomes. Okay? Okay, Antoinette? Thank you, Andiko. Now, let's talk about the elements or components of a curriculum design. There are many labels or names for curriculum design. Some will call it syllabus or a lesson plan. Some will call it a unit plan or a course design. So, syllabus. Ano ba yung syllabus? Ito yung outline of the subject or makakover na topic sa, les sa buong week. While lesson plan, um, nag-propobite siya ng general outlines or yung teacher, teaching goals na isang teacher. 
Um, some would call it um, unit plan or a course design. Pero kahit ano po yung itawag sa design na yun, yung mga common, um, common components ay halos pareha. For a lesson plan or teaching guide includes 1. Intended learning outcomes or ELOs or the decide, desired learning outcomes. So, it was formerly labeled as a behavioral objectives. Third is teaching and learning methods. And fourth, assessment evaluation. Yung first, um, yung first elements na pag-uusapan natin ay behavioral objectives or in intended learning outcomes. It was begin with the end in view. The objectives or intended learning outcomes are the reasons for undertaking the learning lesson from the student's point of view. It is desired learning outcome that is to be accomplished in a particular learning episode engaged by the learners under the guidance of the teacher. As a curriculum design, designer, the beginning of the learning journey is the learning outcomes to be achieved. In this way, both the learner and the teacher are guided by what to accomplish. So, be begin with the end in view. Why? Because, to meeting in tayo sa knowledge skills um, ng, and values that we can attain after undertaking the learning lesson um, or bago tayo mag-lesson. Sa intended learning outcomes, um, dinedefine din niya kung ano yung maa-acquired o magagawa ng isang learner. Kapag kasi sinabi natin intended learning outcomes or desired learning outcomes, ito yung setting goals designed by the teacher before the be before or the beginning of the lesson or demonstrate by the students at the end of discussion. So, the behavior objectives, intended learning outcomes or desired learning outcomes are expressed in action words found in the revised Bloom's Taxonomy of Objectives. So, sa Bloom's Taxonomy Objectives, uh, meron tayong three learning domains. So, C, A, and P. So, CAP stands for Cognitive Domain, Affective Domain, Domain, and Psychomotor Domain. So, Cognitive Domain. And na-emphasize dito yung intellectual outcomes ng mga bata, such as um, knowledge, understanding, at thinking skills. Sa affected domains naman, and emphasize naman dito yung feelings and emotions, such as interest, values, attitudes, and appreciation. Sa psychomotor domain naman po, and emphasize nito yung mga motor skills ng bata. Sa pagpaplano po ng lesson plans, kailangan yung learning is obse objectives mo should be SMART. So, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and time-bound. So, specific means um, yung learning objective, objectives mo should be clearly written and well-defined to know if na-attain ba ng students yung goals or kung may mangyayaring progress sa kanila. While attainable, something that is realistic. Kailangan yung objectives mo daw realistic. Kung tayo ay gagawa ng learning objectives, dapat nakatugma sa kakayahan ng learners natin ng, or ng estudyante natin na kailangan ma-achieve nila sa uli. For example, um, cursive writing. Kunyari, ang, for example, yung students natin ay kinder. So, yung lesson natin, cursive writing, hindi angkop sa kanila. Kailangan yung objectives natin or yung lessons natin ano, um, appropriate sa age nila. And result-oriented, um, focus sa results. Kailangan nakafocus lang tayo sa results na gusto nating makuha or yung ina-expect nating makuha ng learners natin. We, um, we must avoid also um, activity trap. Next is time-bound. Yung learning objectives natin, kailangan may naka-include na specific date. Bakit? Dahil iniiwasan natin yung procrastination ng bata or yung katamaran ng bata. Um, hindi pwedeng mapasobra or mapabilis. Kailangan masusunod sa tamang oras na nakaset. After natin tignan or after natin i-observe ang bata, 
kailangan, alam natin if namet ba ng bata yung objectives natin or ng learners natin na isinet natin nung una before the lesson. The second elements or components is content and subject matter. The content of the lesson or unit is the topic or subject matter that will be covered. First is subject matter should be relevant to the outcomes of the curriculum. An effective curriculum is purposive and clearly focused on the planned learning outcomes. So, kapag sinabi natin relevant, dapat connected or appropriate yung content natin sa curriculum. Paano magiging um, effective yung curriculum or yung content natin? Uh, dapat malinaw, y- kailangan malinaw yung goals natin para mamit ng bata yung outcomes na dapat na mamit nila. Next, subject matter should be appropriate to the level of the lesson or unit. An effective curriculum is progressive, leading students towards building on the previous lessons. Yung lesson or topic ay dapat angkop sa capacity nila or sa age nila. For example, ang estudyante natin ay grade 1. Tapos yung ituturo natin ay MDAS. Di ba hindi angkop sa edad nila or kakaya nila yung topic? Another example naman yung student or learner natin ay grade 6. Tapos yung lesson na ituturo natin sa kanila ay ABCD. Di ba para masyadong madali na sa kanila or basic na sa kanila yon Para um, ginagawa natin ito para hindi mag ng boredom yung isang learner. So basically, as a teacher, dapat alam natin yung appropriate level of the lesson na ititik natin sa mga bata. Next, subject matter should be off to the date, if possible, should reflect current current knowledge, knowledge and concepts. Um, ang paksa ay dapat napapanahon at kung maaari ay dapat napapakita o nasasalamin sa kasuluy, kasakulukuyang kaalaman at konsepto. Siyempre, without good knowledge of what you, t- you are teaching, um, imposible na mamit yung standard in mid- um, imposible na mamit ng students yung standard na gusto mong maabot nila, pero in a me- meaningful way. Okay, next. So, next is references. So, what is references? References is the reference follows the content. It tells where the content or subject matter has been taken. Uh, it may be a book, module, or any publication. Uh, ang example nito is yung Project Wild 1992 K-12 Activity Guide an interdisciplinary supplementary conservation and environmental education program, Council of Environmental Education, Bethesda, MD. Uh, it must bear the author of the material and, if possible, the publications. So, my four widely used referencing styles uh, or um, conversation, uh, conversions. Um, una dito is yung MLA or the Modern Language Association System, APA, or the American Psychological uh, Association System, uh, Harvard System, and the MHR, MHRA, Modern Humanities Research Association System. Uh, ang pinaka-common na referencing style ay ang APA style or the American Psychological Associations. Teaching and Learning Methods These are the activities where the learners derive experiences. It is always good to keep in mind and teaching strategies that, stu- that students will experience, uh, lectures, laboratory classes, field work, etc., and make them learn. Uh, it has a four examples. First is the co- cooperative learning st- activities, independent learning activities, compet- competitive learning activities, and the use of various delivery modes to provide learning experiences is recommended. So, what is cooperative learning activities? Cooperative learning activities allow students to work together uh, which will guide them to learn on their own to find solutions to their problems. The role of the teacher is to guide them, the learners and uh, Uh, it has a democratic process. So, what is democratic process? Ang democratic process, uh, it encourages and uh, contributes to the success of learning, which will the students learn from each other in ways, group projects, and activities considerately or considerably enhance the curriculum. 
And the second one example is the uh, independent learning activities. Uh, it allows learners to develop personal responsibility, the degree of independence uh, to learn how to learn. So, yung independent learning activities mas ah, yung independent learning activities mas akma ito sa mga estudyante na mas mabilis matuto o yung tinatawag nating ah, fast learners. So, next is the competitive activities. What is competitive activities? So, yung competitive activities, ito yung ano, uh, where students will test their competencies against another in a healthy manner, allow learners to perform to their maximum. Uh, most successful individuals in their adult life are competitive even in early schooling. They mostly become the survivors in a very competitive world. Competitive activities, ibig sabihin, uh, uh, ang, ang estudyante, mas nai-engage sila or mas nakokontrol nila kung paano sila maging uh, competitive sa kanilang uh, mga gawain. Uh, example nito is yung capture the flag, war balls, zombie tag, zombie tag, or the group rope jump. And the last example is the, the use of uh, various delivery modes to provide learning experiences is recommended. Uh, Online learning and similar modes are increasing important to many curricula, but this need to be planned carefully to be effective. Uh, next is the assessment or evaluation. Assessment evaluation is the learning occurs most effectively when students receive feedback. In example, when they receive information on, on what they have already uh, learned. The process by which this information is generated in assessment, it, it has three main forms. So, the, yung tatlong forms dito is the self-assessment, peer assessment, and teacher assessment. Self-assessment through which the students learn to monitor and evaluate their own learning. This should be a significant element in the curriculum because we aim to produce graduates who are appropriate appropriately reflective and self-critical. Uh, sa self-assessment, ito yung way kung paano natututo o mas natututo uh, kung paano natututo ang isang bata uh, ina-assess ina niya yung sarili niya, kung ano yung mga gusto niya kung ano yung makakatulong para sa kanyang pagkatuto. pagkatuto. Next is the peer assessment. Peer assessment in which students provide feedback on each other's learning. This can be viewed as an extension of self-assessment and presupposes trust and mutual respect. Research suggests that students can learn to judge each other's work as re reliably as stuff. So, sa peer assessment, uh, natutulungan nito yung mga estudyante na ma-develop yung kanilang uh, panghabang buhay na skills uh, in assessing and provide them, providing feedback to others and also equips them that them with the skills to self-assess and improve their own work. Ito sa teacher assessment, uh, yung teacher nagpo-provide sila ng mga test uh, at nagbibigay ng feedback sa kanilang mga students' performance. Uh, assessment may be Formative, providing feedback to help the students learn more. Or summative, expressing a judgment on the student's achievement by reference to stated criteria. Uh, summative assessment usually involves the allocation of marks or grades. This helps the teacher make decisions about the progress or performance of the students. Okay, thank you, Mayan. So, let's talk about application of the fundamental components to other curriculum designs. So, while our example refers only to design a lesson plan which is mini curriculum, similar for teaching in higher education, courses, or other curricular projects. So, let's have major components of a course design or syllabus. So, number one, intended outcomes or objectives. Tinutukoy dito yung kung ano ang makukuha o magagawa sa mag-aaral o kailangan nilang pag-aralan sa isang buong lesson. Di ba sa paggawa ng lesson, lesson plan, 
kinakailangan mo na may objectives. Kasi yun ang magiging sukat o gabay ng isang guro sa pagtuturo ng kanyang discussion. Okay, number two. Content or subject matter with references. Sinasabi dito, pag sinabing content, ito yung nilalaman ng akademiko. Nilutukoy nito yung sa loob ng isang paksa. Dito napapaloob yung mga may nilalarawan o may dadagdag na kaalaman na binibigay ng content ng curriculum. Okay, number three. Methods or strategies with needed resources. So, kapag sinabing methods, mayroon itong proseso. Proseso sa pamamaraan ng paggawa ng isang bagay. Halimbawa, sa paggawa ng lesson plan. May sinusunod tayong method para masunod-sunod natin yung flow ng objectives. Kaya, may sinusunod na method upang nasa tama ang pagbibigay ng o ipagpapaliwanag sa mga learners at para maintindihan ng learners ang tinatalakay. At dapat may strategy ka para sa objectives, objectives para makuha mo ang goals mo sa mga learners. Okay, number four, evaluation or means of assessments. Ang evaluation naman ay tinutukoy ang pagsusuri ng assessment na natapos kung ano ang magiging feedback ng isang learner. Kaya, nagkakaroon ng evaluation upang maging kasampakapan ito sa pamamarang pagturo o pagtuturo o kung ano pa ang dapat niyang pagtuunan ng guro para sa pangailangan na mag-aaral na matuto pa. All other additional components are the trimmings that each designer may place. This additional part may be an instructional template suggested by other curriculum experts and as required by educational agencies like the Department of Education, Commission on Higher of Education, accrediting agencies, professional organization that would serve the purposes they intend to achieve. Okay, thank you, Marianne. So, dumako naman tayo sa ating lesson 2, which is Approaches to Curriculum Designing. Dito natin malalaman yung mga kailangan nating paraan upang makabuo tayo ng curriculum design. Ayan. We've started to be familiar with the preliminaries of making a simple design through a lesson plan components. Now, we will be looking into how other curricularists approach the curriculum design. We will see how several examples of curriculum designs are used in the schools and classroom. Okay, Hart? Thank you, Enrico. And now, we will discuss about, about the types of curriculum design models. The first type of curriculum design models is the subject-centered design. Subject-centered design is a curriculum design that focuses on the content of the curriculum. The subject-centered design corresponds mostly to the textbook because textbooks are usually written based, the, based on the specific subject or course. So, ang subject-centered design ay nakafocus sa mga topics na itinuturo ng isang teacher sa kanyang mga estudyante at ilan sa mga curriculist na Naniniwala sa curriculum design model na ito ay si Henry Morrison at si William Harris. Subject-centered design has also some variations which, have, which are focused on the individual subject, specific discipline, or a combination of subjects or disciplines which are a broad field or interdisciplinary. So, itong subject-centered designs are common na to sa mga professionals dahil ang ini-aim nila para gamitin itong design na ito is to master the disciplines or the subject matter na pinag-aaralan. So, merong iba-ibang variation itong subject-centered design. Meron siyang apat na variation. Ang unang variation niya ay ang subject design. Sub subject design curriculum is the oldest and so far the most familiar design for teachers, parents, and other laymen. According to the advocates, Subject design has an advantage because it is easy to deliver. So, itong subject design, pag tinanong mo kasi ang teacher or ang mga students ng 
for example, what subject are you teaching or what subject are you taking, madali lang nilang masagot dahil familiar na sila or ito kasi yung, kumbaga, pinag-aralan nila noong unang, uh, noong dating mga panahon. So, for example, sa Philippine Educational System, iba-iba yung mga subjects ng elementary, ng high school, at saka ng college. Iba-iba rin yung dami nila base sa kung anong course or anong strand yung pinag-aaralan nila. And dito, ang drawback naman nitong subject design, nagiging compartmentalized na yung learning. So, ano bang ibig sabihin ng compartmentalized? Ibig sabihin, nakakategorize na or nahahati-hati na yung learning capacity and abilities ng learners. Na, uh, focus na dito yung kung anong subject or kung anong dapat na ituro ng teacher at nakakalimutan na yung mga abilities ng learners o nagiging traditional approach na siya ng teaching and learning. So, next naman is yung discipline design. This curriculum design model is related to the subject design. Discipline refers to specific knowledge learned through a method which the scholars use to study a specific content of their fields. So, dito naman sa subject design, kung sa Subject design, ang content or learning capacity yung pinagtutuunan ng pansin. Dito naman sa discipline design is yung knowledge na dapat ma-attain ng mga learners o yung knowledge na dapat i-impart ng isang teacher sa mga learners. So, for example, sa biology class, tinuturuan or ini-impact or ini-insist sa, sa mga minds ng learners na mag-aral sila or mag-investigate sila like a biologist or Halimbawa, sa atin, sa B.E.D., tinuturuan tayo ng mga professors natin, ng mga teachers natin na mag-act din tayo according sa anong career na gusto natin gawin. Kunwari, magsalita tayo as a real teacher na ganon. And dito naman sa discipline design, hindi siya, kumbaga, hindi siya appropriate sa mga elementary and high school students. Mas appropriate siya sa mga college students which are... Uh, malapit na sa career na gusto nilang maabot in the near future. So, next naman is yung correlation design. Correlated curriculum design link separate subject designs in order to reduce fragmentation. Subjects are related to one another and still maintain their identity. So, dito naman sa correlation design, iniiwasan yung fragmentation. So, ano ba yung fragmentation? Ito yung pagbe-breakdown or paghahati-hati ng mga subjects and informations. Kinocorrelate nila or pinagmerge, pinagsasama-sama yung mga subjects na related to one another. For example, nagturo si teacher ng about sa literature. So, pag nagtuturo siya ng literature, syempre inuungkat yung mga literary pieces na nalimbag noong unang panahon. So, naipapasok din doon yung history. Kasi, uh, noong unang panahon, nagagamit yung mga literary pieces and na i-introduce din yung mga nangyari noong unang panahon. And next naman na example is science and math. For example, nagturo ng chemistry si teacher. So, kapag sinosolve yung mga elements, yung mga computations, nagagamit yung math. Ibig sabihin, nagko-correlate, nag-merge yung mga subject sa isang subject nang hindi nawawala yung identity nila. So, number four, Broad field design or interdisciplinary. Broad field design or interdisciplinary is a variation of the subject-centered design. This design was made to cure the compartmentalization of the separate subjects and integrate the contents that are related to one another. So, dito naman sa interdisciplinary, nire-relate to more than one branch of knowledge. And iniiwasan din dito yung pag i scattered ng mga subjects. So, parang Uh, same lang sila ng correlation design, pero ang interdisciplinary kasi, yung mga branches pinag-iisa lang sa isang known subject, kumbaga. For example, uh, yung subject na geography, economics, political science, anthropology, sociology, history, pinag-merge siya at known lang siya or kilala lang siya bilang subject na social studies. So, another example is yung chemistry, physics, biology, earth sciences, 
Space Sciences or pinag-merge din siya and known siya or kilala siya bilang subject na science. So, yung next naman po na i-discuss is yung learner-centered design. Thank you, Hart. Um, okay, second major type is the learner-centered design. In here, the learner is the center of the educative process. So, the question here, if you... If you are designing your curriculum, what are the needs of my learners? What are their interests? What are their abilities? And based from those um, questions, you will craft the curriculum. You will align everything to, he to their abilities, to their um, knowledge, to their interests, and to their needs. And of course, just like for subject-centered, learner-centered design could also be chopped into, into three into three types. First, we have the child-centered design. In here, the obvious, the obvious the dominant is that the child, I mean the learner, the general term, pay the teachers and the environment interact. Okay, that is why we call it child-centered. You let the child be at the center and the um, respond to stimuli and that includes the environment and the teachers and the teachers okay i repeat for child centered design the child is in the center interacting in mingling responding to the teachers and the environment next it could also be experience centered design so still learner centered but focusing on experience so so in here um uh, your point in your point in mind or your uh, philosophy in mind is that the needs of the learners cannot be preplanned okay hindi siya focus sa needs it's not it's it's not based on the needs of the learners hindi mo maiidentify uh, mahirap daw i-identify ang needs ng mga learners it can be preplanned so what's the best way to um, design the curriculum if the needs cannot be preplanned Unlike in the child-centered, you focus on the needs of the learners. In here, experience become the starting point. Let them experience first, okay? Let them um, respond to the activities and that's where you are going to identify about their needs. So, learners there are made to choose from the activities where um, experience-centered design. I repeat, dun sa una, yung child-centered design, Nagpo-focus pa nagpo-focus pa ito sa mga needs ng mga bata. But in here, it's focusing on the experiences. The activities which are going to um provide to your learners. Okay, last is what we call the um humanistic design. Still under the learner-centered design. Okay? Are you familiar with Abraham Maslow's self-actualization? Yung pyramid, yung pyramid Test those hierarchy of needs. Nang natatandaan nyo yung Maslow's hierarchy of needs, yung inverted na, it's not invert, inverted actually. It's a pyramid, it's a pyramid, okay, na nung nasa ilalim, yung mga basic needs like foods, shelter, at yung pinaka, pinakamahirap yung abutin ay yung self-actualization. Na nasa tuktok, but before you reach that a part na nasa top ng pyramid, you have to satisfy those which are below like yung food, shelter, um, insecurity, or even it's about family, psychological needs, okay? Before before reaping your goals. Now, under humanistic design, bakit siya kinunek? It's about um, letting the learner decide. Kaya nga yung humanistic, kaya nga yung humanistic, no? It own his own pace of learner, learning, Okay? Helping the learners to realize his or her potential. If you remember the philo philosophy about existentialism, ayan, it relates to humanistic design. Na kapag nagturo ka, gagawa ka ng plano. May, may, pa, deadline, may pa deadline ka. Kunyari, ayan, hindi ka magde-decide ng sarili mong deadline. You will consult, consult your learner. Ito, halimbawa, gagawa kayo ng lesson plan hanggang kay... Hanggang kailan nyo tatapusin ang isang lesson plan nang nakagroup kayo? Nagsuggest na din halimbawa yung mga estudyante mo. Ma'am, pwede pong one week? Okay, let's have one week. Or lesson planning, you will be 
the group that's consultative. Okay, bakit siya naging humanistic? You approach the learners. You ask the learners kung ano yung kaya nila. Ano yung gusto nila. That's why um, it says here that learning is self-directed. Ayan. Self-directed learning came by improving self-understanding, development of the self-focusing on the self by means of letting them involved in the plan. Unlike dun sa child-centered, ikaw yung, ikaw yung nag-ano ng gusto nila. Ikaw ang nagplano, ikaw ang nag-decide ng needs nila. For experience-centered, for for experience-centered, you just provided the activities. You let them to stimuli and that includes the environment and the teachers and the teachers. Okay, I repeat for child-centered design, the child is in the center, interacting and mingling, responding to the teachers and the environment. Next, it could also be experience-centered design. So, it's still learner-centered but focusing on experience. So in here, uh, your point in mind or your recipe in mind is that the needs of the learners cannot be pre-planned. Okay, hindi siya focus sa needs, hindi siya focus sa needs. It's not, it's not based on the needs of the learners. Hindi mo ma-identify, mahirap daw i-identify ang needs ng mga learners. It cannot be pre-planned. So what's the best way to um, design the curriculum? If the needs cannot be pre-planned, unlike in the child-centered, you focus on the needs of the learners. In here, experience become the starting point. Let them experience first. Okay, let them um respond to the activities, and that's where you are going to identify about their needs. So, learners there are made to choose from activities, and th and then they experience the activities. Okay, that's where experience-centered design. I repeat, dun sa una, yung, dun sa una, yung child-centered design, nagpo-focus pa ito sa mga needs sa mga bata. But in here, it's focusing on the experiences, the activities which are going to um, provide to your learners for experience-centered. You just provided the activities and you let them experience. Okay, for humanistic design, hindi ka agad-agad nag-identify -agad ng needs. Hindi ka agad-agad nag -agad assume ng interest nila. You will ask your learners about everything. Lahat sila may say, okay? Doon sa gagawin mong paraan ng pagtuturo. Because you are going to teach your learners. You are going to craft the curriculum based on how they want that plan to be decided. Okay? Next. Thank you, Trixie. Next, uh, learner-centered design is problem-centered design. Problem-centered design, generally problem-centered design draws on social problems, needs, interests, and abilities of the learners. Various problems are given emphasis. Yun yung, sa, may two example is yung life situation design and yung core problem design. Explain muna natin yung problem-centered design. A curriculum design that also uses a student approach but that instructs students to look at a problem or situation and figure out a way to solve it. Teacher expects expect students to use their real-life experience to determine an answer. Sa problem center is yung, yung humanap ka ng way kung paano mo masolve yung isang problema. There are two examples are given for the problem center design curriculum. The life situation designs and the core problem designs. If it's life situation, design it focuses on social problems the social needs the social interest and the abilities of the learners and and bucket abilities kasi dito once you introduce the problem you want your learners to develop a skill in order to resolve the problem that's why you focus on the abilities of the learners next is core problem design Sa core problem, dito nakasentro ito sa pangkalahatang edukasyon at ang mga problema ay nakabatay sa karaniwang gawain ng tao. The central focus of the core includes common needs, problems, and concerns of the learners. In core problem design, it, it, it popularized by Fosin Bossing in 1959. It presented ways on how to proceed using core design. Co proceed using core design of a curriculum. These are the steps. Step 1. Make group consensus on important problems. Step 2. 
Develop criteria for selection of important problem. Step 3. State and define the problem. Step 4. Decide on areas of studies, of study including class grouping. Step 5. List the need information or four resources. Step 6. Obtain and organize information. Step 7. Analyze and interpret the information. Step 8. State the tentative conclusions. Step 9. Present a report to the class individually or by group. Step 10. Evaluate the conclusions. And last is step 11. Explore other avenues for further problem solving. Approaches to curriculum design. Child or learner center centered approach. This is approach to curriculum design is based on the underlying philosophy that the child or the learner is the center of the educational process. It means that the curriculum is constructed based on the needs, interests, purpose, and abilities of the learners. The curriculum is also built upon the learner's knowledge, skills, previous learning, and potentials. So, as a teacher, ayaw natin nakikita yung estudyante natin na, na mabilis ma-disengage, ayaw, ma ayaw makinig, or um, ayaw natin yung estudyante natin parang pagod na pagod na makinig sa lesson natin. So, itong approach na to, yung purpose niya, ina-encourage natin yung students natin na kuhain yung interest nila um, sa paanong paraan. So, let's con let us consider these principles. One, acknowledge and respect the fundamental rights of the child. So, ano ba yun? Siyempre, dito papasok yung um, right to good quality of education, right to be safe, and right to be heard. Next, make all activities revolve around the overall development of the learner. So, yung mga gagawing uh, gagawin nating mga tasks or activities, dapat yung ma-engage silang matuto. For example, tayong teacher mag a tayo sa students natin ng mga open-ended questions. So, yung open-ended questions, natututo yung learners na mag-isip ng sarili nilang sagot. Next, number three, consider the, unique, the uniqueness of every learner in a multi multicultural classroom. So, as a teacher, we must... Um, we must appreciate the uniqueness of the students. Dito rin papasok yung equality pagdating sa, sa, pagdating sa edukasyon. Sa bawat estudyante na nasa loob ng klase, meron silang pagkakaiba tulad na lang ng status sa buhay, relihiyon, skills, abilities, ng pagkakaintindi sa isang lesson, or despite of their differences, para parehas silang dapat nakakatanggap ng magandang kalid kalidad ng edukasyon. Number four, <clears throat> consider using differentiated instruction or teaching. Differentiated instruction is the process of tailoring lessons para mamit ng bawat learners yung needs, interests, and strengths nila. For example, um, paggamit ng tamang spelling or vocabulary list, lead bells of students na, and meeting with small, small groups. Number five, prof provide a motivating, supportive learning environment for all the learners. Um, paano, na tayo paano tayo magkikreate ng motivated, motivated na environment sa mga bata? Number one, we can promote a development, meaningful and respectful relationships with our students. Next, dapat aware rin tayo if yung learner ay hindi comfortable sa lugar, or sa mga kasama nila, or sa kung paano tayo manalita as a teacher. Next, kas, dapat aware din tayo if yung learner ay motivated. Kasi ang, motiv ang motivated na bata ay nagiging active. Number three, dapat alam natin as, as a teacher if yung bata ay motivated. Bakit? Kasi kapag motivate, motivated ang bata, um, nagiging active at nakikipag participate ito at excited manu matuto. Thank you. Next. So, thank you, Antoinette. Next is your subject-centered approach. So, this is an anchor on a curriculum design which prescribes separate distinct subjects for every educational level. Basic education, higher education, or vocational technical education. 
So, ang subject-centered approach, uh, nakasentro ito sa paksa. Uh, ito ay isang disenyo ng curriculum. Uh, ito ay isa sa pinaka uh, ginagamit na methods for organizing educational experiences. Uh, ito ay isang uh, teacher-centered approach uh, to teaching where students uh, are more passive participants in the learning process. So, in this approach, the subject matter becomes the basis around which learning experiences are organized and the mastery of subjects and the mastery of subject matter becomes the basis for the attainment of educational objectives. Uh, may limang principles ang subject-centered approach. So, una dito ay ang the primary focus is the subject matter. Uh, the nature of subject matter, it consists of the facts observed, recalled, read, and talk about, and the ideas suggested in course of a de developmental of a situation having a purpose. So, yung subject matter, uh, nagre-refer ito kung ano yung artwork or kung tungkol saan ang isang artwork. Uh, a visual or narrative focus of the artwork, in some instances, the title might give, uh, the title may, might give you a clue. Uh, ang subject matter, uh, uh, in a, it enables the students to listen to the information participate limited uh, discussion, take notes, and retrieve or recall the information for evaluation uh, purposes. Uh, the second uh, principle is the emphasis is on bits and pieces of information which may be detached from life and the subject matter serves as a means of identifying problems of living, learning means accumulation of content or knowledge, and the last uh, principles uh, Teacher's role is to dispense the content. So, ano nga ba yung mga primary characteristics ng subject-centered curriculum or subject-centered approach? Uh, emphasis is placed on acquisition, memorization, and knowledge of each specific content area. Uh, sa loob ng curriculum na ito, uh, it is strong emphasis is placed on instruction, teacher to student uh, explanation, and direct strategies. So, ano nga ba yung importance ng subject-centered curriculum? It is easily standardized and helps students to move between institutions and to progress from primary school to secondary school without too many problems. It allows students to recognize their own skills and weaknesses, making them feel more in charge of their learning journey. Uh, so, bakit subject, uh, so, bakit importante ang subject-centered uh, the subject-centered curriculum is better understood by teachers because their tra training was based on this method as a specialization. The advocates of the subject-centered design have argued that intellectual po powers of individual learners can be developed through this approach. Thank you. Next. So next one po is problem-centered approach. This approach is based on a curriculum design which assumes that in the process of living, children experience problems. Thus, problem solving enables the learners to beca become increasingly able to achieve complete or total development as individuals. So, sinasabi nito yung ano, pagdating sa deskarte ng isang curriculum, nakakaranas ng mga problema o challenges ang mga learners. Kaya, dito, mga, ang mga learners na matapatas ang nilang kakayahan ng mga mag-aaral sa maabot, na maabot ng komprehensibo ang challenges sa problema. So, this is the characterized by the following views and beliefs. Number one, the learners are capable of directing and guiding themselves in resolving problems. Thus, they become independent learners. So, sinasabi dito, ang mga mag-aaral ay kakayahan na gabayan ang mga kanilang sarili sa pag-aayos ng kanilang problema. Ang mga mag-aaral ay may, may kalayaan na gawin ang kanilang dapat gawin upang makapag-focus sa kanilang pag-aaral sa pag-aaral. Okay, number two. The learners are prepared to assume their civic responsibilities through direct participation in different activities. Sinasabi dito, 
na ang yung mga mag-aral, mag-aral ay may mga responsibilidad na gampanan na makilahok sa ibang aktibidad sa paaralan. So that magkakaroon tayo ng maraming kaalaman o mga bagong kaalaman na magagamit natin sa mga iba, mga iba-ibang pagkakataon. Number three, the curriculum leads the learners in the recognition of concerns and problems in seeking solutions. The learners are considered problem solvers. Number, number three, ang ibig sabihin naman dito, ang mag-aaral ay may ituturing na sol- solver ng problema. So, ihalin tulad na lang natin sa sinabi ni Dr. Haseresal na ang kabataan ay pag-asa ng bayan. So, ang mag-aaral ang sumisibil- sumisimbolo ng bagong henerasyon. Kalimitan ang mga mag-aaral o kabataan ng sabi nating palaban. At kapag may napansin sila lipunan, na gumagawa sila kaagad ng parang para may tubid agad ang mga problema nila. Kaya naihalin tulad ko ito sa sinabi ng Dr. Seresal dahil sinabi dito na ang mga learners is the in the learners are the considered problem solvers. Ayan, napag-usapan na natin yung preliminaries para sa paggawa ng ating curriculum. So ngayon, dumako na tayo sa ating last lesson, which is lesson 3, which is curriculum mapping. A curriculum design is reflected in a written curriculum either as a lesson plan, syllabus, unit plan, or a bigger curriculum like K-12. Before a teacher shall put this plan or design into action, he or she must need to do a curriculum map. So, kailangan gawin ito ng mga curricularists or yung mga teachers, yung curriculum map. Kasi, dito natin matitrace kung ano dapat yung uunahin. Kasi, systematized na tong ating curriculum map. Kung baga, kung nga, pag maghahanap tayo ng treasure, di ba? Kailangan natin ng mapa para ma-achieve natin yung treasure. Kung i-reflect mo naman dito, kailangan natin ng map para ma-achieve yung learning ng mga bata. This lesson will teach us curricularists an important process and tool in curriculum development which is curriculum mapping and curriculum maps. So, ano ba yung curriculum mapping? Curriculum mapping is a process or procedure that follows curriculum designing. So, katulad na lang ng sinabi ko kanina, di ba ito yung procedure, yung para ma-achieve natin yung learning ng mga bata. Kumbaga, sa pagluluto ng ulam, hindi mo mabubuo yung gusto mong ulam kung hindi mo susundan yung procedure. It is done before curriculum implementation. This was introduced by Heidi Hayes Jacobs in 2004 in her book, Getting Results with Curriculum Mapping. So, take note nyo yan, ha? This approach is an ongoing process or work in progress. It is not a one-time initiative but a continuing action. So, yung basically saying, yung curriculum map natin is dynamic. Hindi lang siya basta, okay, gumawa ng curriculum mapping. Hindi ganon. Continuous process siya na, syempre, di ba, sa iba't ibang lugar, may iba't ibang kailangan na matutunan yung mga bata. So, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-stay sa isang standard na curriculum map. Kailangan ongoing process yun. At sabi dito, work in progress. There are common questions that are asked by stakeholders like teachers, colleagues, parents, school officials, and the community as well. These questions may include what do my students learn? What do they study in the first quarter? What are they studying in the school throughout the year? Do my teachers who handle the same subject cover the same content, achieve the same outcomes, or use similar strategies? How do I help my students understand the connections between my subjects and other subjects within the year or next year? So, ito yung magbubuo sa ating curriculum map, yung mga question na to. So, ano ba yung kailangan matutunan ng bata? Ano ba kailangan na ano ituro ko? So, yun yung sa pagbuo ng ating curriculum map. Okay, Hart? Thank you, Enrico. So now, we're going to tackle about the curriculum mapping process. There are many ways of doing things according to what outcome one needs to produce. This is also true with curriculum mapping. However, whatever outcome will be made 
there are suggested steps to follow. So, yun nga, ganun sinabi ni Enrico na in order to achieve one thing or one objective, kailangan meron tayong process na sinusunod. Ganun din sa pagtuturo, gumagawa tayo ng curriculum map or a familiar na tawag na curriculum guide para magawa natin yung isang objective sa isang teaching and learning process. So, ganito yung pag gawa or yung process na paggawa ng curriculum map. First, make a matrix or spreadsheet. So, pag gumagawa kasi ngayon ng curriculum guide or lesson plan ang mga teachers uh, sa Microsoft Word ang ginagamit nila. So, nagpe-prepare sila doon ng table na merong specific number of rows and columns. So, next, place a timeline that you need to cover. This should be dependent on time frame of a particular curriculum that was written. So, i-identify mo na kung gaano katagal or gaano uh, gaano katagal yung span ng gagawin mong curriculum guide. For example, gagawa ka ng isang uh, curriculum guide for one quarter or one semester. Depende kung gaano katagal mo ituturo yung mga lesson na i-indicate mo doon. Next, Enter the intended learning outcomes, skills needed to be taught or achieved at the end of the teaching. So, kailangan mong ilagay yung mga objectives na gusto mong matutunan ng mga student mo kapag itinuro mo yung mga lessons na inilagay mo doon. And sa paglalagay ng mga intended learning outcomes, dapat kasama doon yung free learning domains. So, ano ba yung free learning domains? Yun yung sa cognitive, affective, and psychomotor objective. So, ngayon kasi, sa DepEd, ang inilalagay nilang nila is yung uh, MELC na tinatawag or yung most essential learning competencies. Ibig sabihin kung ano yung pinaka-objectives na dapat matutunan or dapat ma-attain ng isang learner kapag nagtuturo sila. Number four, enter in the same ma matrix the content areas or subject areas to be covered. So, for example, ilalagay mo, magtuturo ka ng subject na science. So, ilalagay mo doon ng matter i-enter mo doon yung mga subject areas or content areas na related or naka-under doon sa subject na ilalagay mo. For example, matter. Nakalagay doon yung uh, three phases of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Number five, align and name each resource available such as textbooks, workbooks, module next to subject area. So, dito naman sa number five is yung references. Kailangan mo rin kasing ilagay kung saan Uh, books, ang textbooks mo, kinuha yung mga uh, modules, yung mga topics na inilagay mo doon sa curriculum guide na ginagawa mo. Kailangan mo rin doon ilagay yung mga site if ever man na sa internet mo kinuha yung mga contents ng curriculum guide na ginawa mo. Next, align and enter the assessment procedure and tools to the intended learning outcomes content areas, and resources. So, ilalagay mo din dito kung ano yung mga activities na gusto mong ipagawa sa mga students kapag itinuturo mo yung content ng isang subject. For example, magpapa-activity ka, magpapa-roleplay ka, magpapa-recitation ka, or magdi-discuss ka lang all, all throughout the time span ng discussion nyo. Number seven, Revise and refine map-based suggestions and distribute to all concerns. So, ibig sabihin, i-furnish mo na, aayusin mo na simula una hanggang sa pinakahuli yung content ng curriculum guide mo and i-distribute mo yon or i-send mo, ipapasa mo sa iba pang personnels o sa iba pang tao na involved sa paggawa ng curriculum map. And last is to revise further improvement. So, hindi na, sa paggawa kasi ng curriculum map or curriculum, curriculum guide, hindi siya agad-agad okay talaga. Ibig sabihin, may mga improvements pa, may mga revisions pang magaganap. Kaya nga, kailangan i-disseminate mo siya or ipasa mo siya sa ibang personnel para ma-check at para magkaroon ng maayos na curriculum guide or curriculum map. Now, meron tayong tinatawag na alignment sa ating ano, curriculum map. So, the first one is called Horizontal alignment, called a spacing guide, will make all teachers teaching the same subject in a grade level follow the same timeline to accomplish the learning outcome. So, paano ba yung ano, pa horizontal, di ba, pa ganun? So, yung pa ganito, ayan, kung may kita nyo yung ating ano, ating example ng curriculum map, yung pa horizontal dyan ng mga contents, 
Yan yung pacing guide ng mga teachers na nagti-teach ng same subject sa same grade level. So, meron din tayong vertical alignment. Vertical alignment will see to it that concept development, which may be in hierarchy or in spiral form, does not overlap but building from a simple to more complicated concepts and skills. So, paano yung vertical, di ba, yung patayo? So, sinisigurado dito na hindi natatakpan yung mga content sa ano sa horizontal kasi lahat yan magkakakonek eh. Di ba, yung sinasabi ko kanina, procedure to. Kaya, dapat hindi niya na-overlap yung isa, dapat connected silang magkakasama. Ayan, kung may kita nyo dito, ito yung example ng curriculum map. So, may kita nyo yung mga pa-horizontal part, ayan yung ano, yan yung sinusundan ng mga teachers na nag-teach with the same subject sa same grade level. So, yung vertical naman ay yung nag-help sa development ng mga bata yung hindi na-overlap yung other contents. So, ayan yung paggawa ng curriculum map. Ayan, maraming salamat sa pakikinig mga bata. Maraming salamat. Bye-bye!